how does reimbursement of Medicaid compare to private pay? Well, in Florida, it's absolutely terrible. Um, in Florida, we are like 45 bucks a day, 50 bucks a day. Wow. And that's why, you know, like we, we decided to just, you know, like we, we realized, you know, that you can't really run an adult day center successfully at that rate. No um, way. For, especially for what people do. And so we, we were private pay. So we average around like basically a hundred bucks a day mm -hmm. uh, on private pay. But the, the nice part about the private pay side of it too, is we have a lot less medical oversight because we're more of a social model. You know, we're really just trying to take care of. We're a social model as well. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so now, um, yeah, so yeah, the, the hard part, the hard part is that, that like, and then without diving deeper into the demographics, like, mm -hmm. like what I would love to know is like what percentage of your market is Medicaid? Like, I know you're hundred percent, maybe like for your, for what you do, but like, I would be curious to know, like in your area, like, is it, you know, 20% Medicaid on dual enrolled plans? Is it, um, you know, 30%, 40%, 50%, like how, how much of your demographic within that five plus mile radius is, uh, you know, on Medicaid versus, you know, cause, cause then, cause the hard part is you can't, you may not be able to, to change it if it's a high Medicaid area, then we got to go now and focus. Okay. How do we, how do we get the plans on board? How do we get the plans to see the value in adult day over home care? And it's going to be a lot more of a lobbying effort and a lot less of a consumer. Yeah. Effort. I mean, yeah, I think we're past that hurdle. I mean, we are contracted with the plans. Um, you know, I think the issue is more getting members and retaining them. Um, so, so are you having more issues with getting them or more issues retaining them? both um so, so, so you know when, so, we, when, we talk, when we talk about like I, I mean i don't know if you are able to share but like just like number of new people per month starting versus the number of you know people leaving every month um i don't have all that numbers in front of me but um i do know that we have on our roster i mean we've had hundreds of people come through our doors and people that are on a roster people that are constantly coming out say is around 120 um, that are coming, our daily census is probably 40 okay. and, um, we need to be at 50 because our, now, our overhead is. Yeah. And does, you, does yeah. your, does your, does, does your plans, like, do they approve a certain number of days or like, yeah. like, how does that work? Like, cause like in Florida, it's basically like, all right, Mrs. Smith, she gets three days a week and it's, you know, like, or she gets five days a week and it just depends on the case manager. Yeah, exactly. No, uh, a certain amount of days. I mean, obviously, depending, you know, on the patients, on the members' needs, but um, yeah. they authorize a certain amount of days. Yeah. So what? So what do you find is the number one reason why people might be, um, like, may not be staying as long? Uh, that's that's part of my struggles. I'm trying to figure that out because we have a uh, we have a great staff. Um, our director, you know, maybe could be a little more interactive. With the seniors, I think um, that's something we can learn from you. You know, I'm not the director; I'm with the, uh, you know, with the administrative staff. But um, the director that we hired, I feel, can be a little more uh, interactive and caring. Um, do, do, you know, do you, do, you, do you have someone that just focuses on the activities there? Or yeah, it... sure. Okay. And, that, and how is that person? Are they like a hype person, or are they like totally melancholy? Okay. Yeah, totally. Yeah, the seniors love her. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. So, so that's probably so. So then I guess, because now I'm just trying to figure out where the problem, like, you know, is it on the engagement side? Is it on the intake side? You know, right, I'm curious, I'm curious from you, like when you're building the culture, really, I think when you have, when you have a social adult daycare, right, they're coming to socialize, right? And you're basically yeah. building a community, right? Within, you know, with yeah. those people. Um, I'm curious as to how you guys, right? How you guys do it. I'm sorry. Yeah. But what, what about cognitive? Because like, because here's the thing too, right? Um, so we group our folks into three different cognitive like levels, um, you know, because the hard part too is, you know, it, it, like, say you have like really highly cognitive folks and there mm -hmm. was a lot of people that have like, like the later stages of Alzheimer's, I'm sure you already know this, but like, it's yeah. like, you know, but my point is that we're trying to like make really engaged groups, you know, but like with like-minded cognitive levels. So like, you know, and, and, and cause the problem is if I put a highly cognitive person with a you know, a person that's like you know, late stage Alzheimer's, like, you know, I'm going to get a bad experience and, and, and that person may not want us to come back because they may think everyone's old, <laughs> you know, right. they're, they're 95, but everyone else is old. This place is for old people, you know, but then I get that like highly cognitive folks into a group together. What ends up happening is like those people end up coming because they like it and they build that community. But the thing is, we might be doing a different activity with them specifically, whereas over here with that person that has like later stages of Alzheimer's, we're doing a separate activity for them. You gotta have those um, so like, clicks, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so you're kind of creating like these mini clicks 
inside of the environment together. Now, here's the thing. Every day we, when we come together for music, now we can bring everyone together because like you could be late stage with Alzheimer's, but the second your favorite song comes on, boom, it's like you're just as cognizant well, as everyone else. You know, right. so it's like, so there's certain moments where we'll bring everyone together where their cognitive function won't really matter as much when it comes to engagement and activities. But then there's definitely times you know, and, and we don't, we, we're nonstop. Like this is another thing I think that's important too, is that we have zero downtime. Like we roll from one activity to the next activity. It, it, like the downtime is like, like someone going to the restroom, you know, or having a snack, you know, you know, uh, or dessert in between like lunch and the live music. Like, so like there's zero downtime. Like my goal is that we, we don't ever want them to have enough time to think about why they're there. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to learn how to open your own adult daycare center, go to adcpro.com. If you'd like the latest business tips, click here and make sure you subscribe to our channel. Click here. We'll see you guys next time.